Welcome Warhill High School's great chemistry students. Today we'll be looking at thermochemistry part two, calculating energy changes during phase changes. The objectives today are to understand that melting and vaporization are endothermic processes, to understand that condensation and solidification are exothermic processes, and to use unit cancellation to calculate the joules of energy involved in phase changes. Remember that 1,000 joules equals 1 kilojoule. Before we go any farther, please get a calculator and a periodic table and a writing implement and a piece of paper because I'll work an example problem and then you are going to work a problem. In a previous lesson, you used Q equals MC delta T to calculate energy changes while heating a substance as shown in the blue regions. In order to use this equation, you had to have a temperature change. In this lesson, you're going to be calculating the heat changes that take place in the flat regions where the temperature is staying constant. You will use unit cancellation to calculate the energy changes. Let's do a quick vocabulary review. As we heat a substance, First it melts, which we call fusion, and then it boils, which we call vaporization. As we begin to cool it, then we have delta H of condensation, so that's called condensation, and we have delta H of solidification. We're going to take a look at the orange region. Melting ice, or any substance, is endothermic because we have to add heat. The temperature remains constant during the entire melting process because the added energy goes into overcoming many of the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. However, when we cool a substance, when it goes from a liquid to a solid, it's exothermic. This may seem counterintuitive when you think about water freezing at zero degrees Celsius, but let's instead think about molten iron, which solidifies at 1500 degrees Celsius. So as we pour molten iron into an, a mold, as it solidifies, it's going to be releasing energy to the surroundings, so it is exothermic. The heat of fusion, which we show as triangle fusion, meaning delta, is the heat energy absorbed by a substance as it melts, shown by the red arrows. Heat of solidification, delta H, is the heat released as a substance solidifies. Notice that delta H fusion and delta H solidification have the same absolute value. All that changes is the sign. The heat of vaporization is the heat absorbed as a substance vaporizes and the heat of condensation is the heat released as a substance condenses. Heat suffusion, solidification, vaporization, and condensation are reported in different units. So for example, I have three different substances shown here, water, iron, and lead. I have their respective melting points, their heat of fusion in kilojoules per mole, heat of fusion in kilojoules per gram, and heat effusion in calories per gram. These constants provide us with conversion factors as shown below. So let's say that I am considering H2O and I'm going to use kilojoules slash moles. That means 6.0 kilojoules equals one mole of H2O. That's the amount of energy to melt one mole of ice. If instead the data I look up says that I require 0.334 kilojoules per gram, that means 0.334 kilojoules melts one gram of H2O. And finally, if I'm considering calories per gram, that means that it requires 79.9 calories to melt one gram of H2O. So since you can have these different types of units, you have to be careful when you read these problems. We are going to start with an easy problem. We're going to calculate the moles of water melted by adding 2.25 kilojoules of heat to a block of ice at zero degrees Celsius. The only reason I say zero degrees Celsius is so you know we're at the melting point. We're given 
2.25 kilojoules of heat are fine because we want to find the moles of water and we know 6.0 kilojoules per mole means that 6.0 kilojoules is required to melt one mole of H2O. So we have a conversion factor. We're going to start with our given, just like we always do with unit cancellation. We're going to bring our unit down and we want to get to moles and we look, oh, look, I can go just directly 6.0 kilojoules is the same thing as one mole of H2O. I do the math. The calculator says 0.375, but I know I can only have two sig figs, so I will correct it to 0.38, and my units are moles of H2O. Okay, you are going to try the next one down. So you're going to calculate the moles of iron melted by adding 15 kilojoules of heat to a block of iron at 1500 degrees Celsius. That's its melting point. And you're given that delta H is 13.8 kilojoules per mole. So identify your given, your find, what your no, and then use unit cancellation. Pause the video and proceed. Hopefully you set up the problem the same way I did and you got the correct answer. We're going to go on to the next problem. If you didn't get the correct answer, pause right here and copy things, but we're going to go on to the next problem. I'm going to ramp it up just a little bit. We're going to calculate the kilojoules of heat released when 36.04 grams of steam, that would be gaseous water, condenses to liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. And we're told that delta H of condensation is negative 40.7 kilojoules per mole. So we've got our given, we have our find, and what we know. Now when we go to look at this, we're just going to look at the absolute value here. We're not going to worry about the negative sign. So let's go ahead and get started. Now notice we've got grams of steam, so we're probably going to need a periodic table. So we're going to start with 36.04 grams of H2O. And with unit cancellation, we always bring the unit down, so we're going to bring grams of H2O down. And we look at our conversion factor, and we have to get to moles before we can use it. So we're going to have one mole of H2O, and using the periodic table, our molar mass of water is 18.016 grams. Now we're going to bring our moles of H2O down, and we can go to kilojoules, and we have 40.7 kilojoules for one mole of H2O. We're ready to do our math, and our calculator says that we have 81.42. We can only have three significant figures, so this becomes 81.4 kilojoules. Guess what? You're going to work the next problem. So calculate the energy in kilojoules to melt 253 grams of iron its melting point of 1500 degrees Celsius. You're given a delta H of fusion. So pause the video and work the problem. Okay, take a look at the solution and see how you did. Actually, if you got to 62.5, you know you did it right. Okay, we're going to move on to the next problem. How many grams of lead can be melted by adding 422 kilojoules of energy at lead's melting point of 327 degrees Celsius? The heat of fusion for lead is 4.8 kilojoules per mole. So this time our given is 4.22, 422 kilojoules. What we are looking for is the grams of lead 
and we are told 4.8 kilojoules is required to melt one mole of lead. So let's go ahead and start with our given, which is 422 kilojoules. Unit cancellation, so we bring the units down, so we go to kilojoules, and then we have 4.8 kilojoules, and that is one mole of lead. But we can't stop there because we need to get to grams. So we're going to bring one mole of lead down. We will look at the periodic table and we're told that the mass of lead is 207.2 grams. So now we're ready to plug everything in. And your calculator should say 18216. We will correct for significant figures, so you should have that it would be 1,800 grams of lead would be melted. It's your turn to do the next one. How many grams of neon must crystallize, that means solidify, at its freezing point of minus 246 degrees Celsius to release 560 joules of heat? given that neon's delta H of fusion is 330 joules per mole. If you get 34 grams of neon, you did it right. Please pause and try the problem yourself. The work is shown below. If you did not get 34 grams, pause the video and take a look at the work and figure out where you went wrong. All right, we're ready to go on to the last set of problems. So we're going to calculate the joules of energy needed to melt 45 grams of C12H26 at its melting point of 263K. The heat of fusion for C12H26 is 216 joules per gram. So our given is 45 grams of the C12H26 we want to find the joules, and we know that 216 joules is required to melt one gram of C12H26. So let's start with our given, which is 45.0 grams of C12H26. And it's unit cancellation, so we're going to bring grams down. So we bring down grams of C12H26. And I'm looking at this problem and I'm going, oh, this is going to be a pain. I have to get out the periodic table. But wait, I don't, because look at this. This is telling me how many joules per one gram. So I just need to write 216 joules matches one gram of H2O. I'm not one gram, one gram of C12H26, and I'm all ready to go. So this is really a very easy problem. The calculator says 9720, and I can have sig, three sig figs, and that has three sig figs, so I'm all ready to go. So the units would be joules, so I'll put a box around it, and I'm done. So the key behind this is to read the problem carefully. It's already given it to you in grams. This is 216 joules for one gram. All right, last problem that you're working. Go ahead and give it a shot. Find the joules of energy to vaporize 13.1 grams of methane, that's CH4, at its boiling point. Methane's heat of vaporization is 0.51 kilojoules per gram. Pause the video and work the problem. Hopefully you got the right answer, and hopefully you realized that your unit cancellation was very easy because you just got to use that 0.51 kilojoules matches one gram. You did not need the periodic table at all. Let's summarize what you learned today. Today, you learned that melting and vaporization are endothermic processes. You learned that condensation and solidification are exothermic processes. And you learned that unit cancellation can be used to calculate the joules of energy involved in phase changes.